Bitwarden RS is a locally hosted password vault. Bitwarden also has a, a service that they host. You just go to bitwarden.com. You can sign up, put in your email, password. Bitwarden is, RS is not the same as bitwarden.com. Basically, Bitwarden RS is a local replacement for bitwarden.com. Right. Very good. Yes, all extensions, program tools work Bitwarden RS even more. The premium features work for free. Okay. So if you want, here's premium features. TOTP authenticator and generator. Yeah. Two-step login with UB and UTF and Duo. You get storage. Okay. So they can store stuff for you. Vault health reports. Uh, TOTP authenticator and storage and generator. Okay, great. Number of users. Uh, and priority customer support for Pro. This for $10 a year. So it's not that bad. Should we try and set it up from scratch on my my development instance of Home Assistant? I'm going to go to DuckDNS. So this is DuckDNS. If you've never used it before and you logged in, this is what you would see. So let's put in a domain name here. Dr. Z's loves Reese. <laughs> this is giving you the IP address down here. We're going to need this token for the add-on. So we go to the add-on. We go to the configuration. We do want Let's Encrypt to be true. And then we're going to put this in here. Dr. Z's loves Reese. Okay, DuckDNS add-on configuration. Accept terms true for Let's Encrypt. Put in your token for DuckDNS and put in the domain that you're going to use. All right, so there's what a normal configuration looks like. We're going to save it and we need to restart it. I had already started it. You can go to the logs and you can watch it restart. It's valid. Yay. So DuckDNS has been set up and there is a external URL that will point to right now my just main public IP address. That add-on is done. Let's now grab the Bitwarden add-on, Bitwarden RS. Install. All we did was install it, now we start it. Now we go to the logs, watch the logs. All right, here's your initial admin password. And it looks like everything else went well. So to get to the admin page, you go to the open web UI, but you don't go to this page. We're not gonna log in yet. We're gonna change this URL up here to slash admin. Now we can put in our token. I don't remember why. What do I have to put in here again? Configure the admin interface. You'll need to set the domain URL under general. General settings. Okay, here we go. Domain URL. Dr. Z's loves Reese. Duck DNS. Yeah, you don't need to set up the email configuration. That's just if you want it to send you emails, right? Uh, so moving on. I think we're done here, aren't we? So if we go here to vault, now we can create an account. Justin at Dr. Z's. Friends call me Dr. Z's. And I'm going to set a master password. And I'm going to set it to something that I will remember. <laughs> I wonder if it'll let me. Yeah. Master password is weak. You want to use this master password? Yeah, I'm sure. Anyways, you may now you may now log in. All right, so I can log in to the vault with my crappy password. So there's my vault. Excellent. Is that all? Oh, we need to do this. This was the other part. We need a port forward. We're going to make the new rule. It's going to go from port. I'm just going to change the external port on this one, but the internal port will still be the same. So 7271, but the internal port is 7277, and that's necessary. And then my internal IP address, 190 dummy. So now I've got a port forwarding rule that takes external port 7271, which can be pretty much anything as long as it's not used by something else, right? And it's going to my internal port 7277. Let's restart the add-on. Well, let's just try it and see what happens if we now go to HTTPS uh, and then Dr. Z's loves Reese. I'm just going to keep saying that today for you, Reese.org. And then to that port, which was 7271. And this should take me to that new Bitwarden vault. There it goes. That worked. Thank you. <laughs> and it's encrypted. It worked, it worked, it worked, it worked, it worked. So now I can log into this Bitwarden vault from outside my home network. And I know Avi and there's some people say, oh, do you use VPN? Great. VPN's an option. Is it more secure than this? Sure. But is this bad? It's not the end of the world. Did we, did we do it all? Was it that easy? I like to do some unique electronics projects. Many of my projects start out looking like this. But with some help from PCBWay, they sometimes end up 
looking like this. If you've already got an idea and a PCB design, you can use their online store to upload the PCB creation files, select the number of boards you want, and proceed to checkout. It's that easy. They also have a collection of other people's projects that you can browse through and find something that looks fun, useful, or just plain cool. Recently, I've started using their assembly service as well. I've been very impressed with how thorough they've been in verifying the build of materials and giving suggestions about how to get the best prices on the different components. They even make cool stuff like flexible PCBs and solder paste stencils, if you're into that sort of thing. I've bought a lot of PCBs from PCBWay. I've always been surprised at how fast their stuff arrives, and I've never had a problem with quality, not even a little. We live in a pretty amazing time where a regular Joe like me or you can sit in their back cave, think up some crazy electronics project, share it with a company like PCBWay, and within a couple of weeks, be holding it in their hot little hands. If you've got a project that requires custom PCBs, check out PCBWay. So first we went to DuckDNS and we created a URL domain and we copied our certificate. We went to Home Assistant and we installed the DuckDNS add-on that includes Let's Encrypt. In the configuration of DuckDNS, we made sure Let's Encrypt was on by, by putting true under accept terms. And then the token we copied from DuckDNS right there. That goes in there. And then under domains, we put the domain that we created on DuckDNS. And that's it. Save, restart, next step, installed the Bitwarden RS add-on. In the configuration, we didn't actually change anything. And that's all, right? We did go do the administrative stuff. I mean, that's it's something that Reese likes and you can go in there and set that up, but you don't actually have to go to that admin thing. You can create an account at that point before you can access it through the URL that you made on DuckDNS, you need to go into your router and you need to forward the port, your home assistant IP address and 7277. So we've got DuckDNS URL set up, Let's Encrypt enabled on DuckDNS. We've got the token from DuckDNS in the DuckDNS add-on in home assistant. We've got Bitwarden started up. We registered an account in the Bitwarden vault. We opened the port. And then we went to our URL at the port and it gives us the vault. Did I miss anything? So this is the extension for Chrome. Go to settings and then where it says server URL, we want it to be this, which is the DuckDNS URL that we created with the proper port. Settings. And then under this, we're going to paste in HTTPS, Dr. Z's loves Reese, DuckDNS.org with the correct port and save it. Now I can log in. And there we go. Awesome, right? So show how to use it. Okay, let's show how to use it. Uh, I'll tell you this. If you go to Bitwarden, uh, they have a really nice little video that they show you about how to save passwords and such. And we're gonna go to um, sign up. Okay, accept and sign up. All right, here we go. Now, instead of filling it out here, you fill it out up here. Click on add a login. And it puts in here the website. So you put in what you want as the username and the password. And that should be it. Save. Now there's a little one here. And when that little one shows up, it means that Bitwarden has a login for that website. So if you want it to fill that information in, you just click on that and it'll fill the information in. Try password generator next time. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So let's get out of Redbox and let's sign up for something else. Create an account. So we get on the create an account page and we go to Bitwarden and we add a login. All right, and now password generator, is that what this does? Oh yeah, generate a password, sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Make it nice and long. That looks good. Pick that one. Select. Boom. Put that in there. All right. So that should be it, right? We're going to save that. And now we should be able to click this and it'll fill it in. I'm at least 18 years old and that'll do. Submit. 
Uh, what else do we need to see about Bitwarden? What are, what are some other awesome features about Bitwarden? Oh, there's the desktop app, which we never finished. So does it overwrite the Chrome extension that autofills passwords? So if we want to sign in, we'll go to the sign in page. And this is actually what Google would have put in there, right? Because that's my sort of real login. Bitwarden has a little number here. It says, hey, there's, I've got a login information for this. Do you want to use it? If I go here and do this, then it will overwrite what Google had. You can turn on unofficial autofill. Oh, click on options and setting options. Oh, here's the enable autofill on page load. This is the experimental. If the login form is detected, automatically perform an autofill. Yeah, heck yeah. This is important. If you've been using a different uh, password keeper in the past, you can import it here. You can also export this one to something else. Disable icons, dark theme. Dark theme. Share it with somebody else. Bitwarden allows you to share your vault with others by using an organization account. Organizations can be created in the web app. Yeah, okay. So you can't create them in the extension. So we can just go to Dr. Z's Loves Reese and then log in. And then we can create an organization. Thank you. Organization name, billing email. What does that do? Then you create an item, and at the end, you can share it to the organization. Oh, okay. So if I go in here, I can go to one of these, edit, and then I can share it in an organization. Sync first, ask questions later. <laughs> okay, now that I have synced, or sunk, is it sunk? Now that I have sunk, we will go back to my vault, and we will go to share. Now I can share with this organization. Yay. For those of you who are just getting here, Tech Turtle, here's the recap. We set up Bitwarden. The way we did it was go to DuckDNS, make a URL, go to Home Assistant, install startup, DuckDNS, let's encrypt add-on. In the configuration, you need to put your token from DuckDNS, and you need to put the name of the URL, and you need to put true for accept the terms of Let's Encrypt. Save it, start it. Go to Bitwarden, install it. I don't think we changed anything in the config. You can go to the web UI and create an account. Last thing you need to do is go to your, brow or your uh, router and forward port 7277 to your Home Assistant URL. And that's it. Then you should be able to go to your DuckDNS URL and it will open to the vault for Bitwarden and you can log in with the account that you made on Bitwarden. You can also download and install the extension. You change this server URL to your DuckDNS URL. When you go to try and log into the extension, it will go to your house and it'll log into your, the Home Assistant add-on that you just made for, for Bitwarden. And you can do the same thing with uh, the desktop apps for Windows, Mac, Linux. We got Bitwarden working and I like it. And I'm going to start using it instead of, instead of one password. Reese, thanks a lot, buddy. Good job. Thanks for your help. So if you guys missed it, if any of you, like uh, Tech Turtle's talking about Christmas lights already. If any of you missed it, we do have uh, Permatrack. Um, so you can go to rgb-man.com or on my website, drz's.com slash store, I think. It's a great, great way to do it. I'm working now on a video where I went and helped somebody install it. And uh, that'll be the next Permatrack related video that I'll put out. Have fun, everyone. Thanks for a great stream. You're welcome, Bearded Tinker. Thanks for being here. There's an add-on. I use it Proxmox as a container. It's basically maps domains to IP addresses. Mm. It allows you to have any domain you want for an IP. That's really yeah, cool. I'll have to try that. That must be how that must be how how Frank was doing that in those examples. What is this boy doing? All right, how should we sign off? Like we're statues with no, as little expression no as possible. No as always, thanks for watching. Until next time. Adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy.
If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.